You need to watch something called Vi Heart. Hey. Hey. Oh, You need to see a movie called movie little clips of something called Vi Heart. Her name is Vi Heart. Yeah, well, she's a little bit different. And she does a she has a web page called Mathematical Doodling. And then she does some pretty cool things. Anyways. So in math 12, we talked about y equals sine x. And then I asked you what the inverse function was x equals sine y. And then I would ask you to solve for y. And you look at me funny and you say, Mr. App, I don't know how to get the sine away from the right-hand side of the equation to make a y equals. And I say, but you do. That's why we created a mathematical operation called arc sine. Well, on old calculators, they called it. It's the generation of the terminology. Arc sine got changed into inverse sine, got changed into sine to the minus 1. This is actually the correct mathematical way of saying it. This is the, I'm not going to use the word. No, I'll start, no, I'm not going to say it. And then this is the calculator corrupting way of writing it. Yeah, that's exactly why I don't like that notation. Because people think that that's one over sine. No, that's not, it's not cosecant, right? And that's the problem. People think it's cosecant. So arc sine and sine cancel. And you're done with arc sine x equals y. Okay. So if I ask my calculator to graph this, I'm going to graph it and then say, you have to, you know, you know what, I don't need you to get your calculator out. So what I would do, so not that bad function, graph y equals sine x, but graph it in such a way, uh, we didn't talk about, did we talk about one to oneness in 1.5? No. Did we or didn't we? One to oneness. Okay, we. I'm going to graph the sine graph in a s weird way. You're going to go, okay, I recognize that part of the sine graph. And then I'm going to graph this part of the sine graph. Pi over 2, negative pi over 2, positive 1, negative 1. Now, we agree that that's not the entire sine graph. Because the sine graph goes on forever and ever and ever. But... If we switch x and y and draw this graph, this function, it, th sorry, this graph is then a function. And then I want you to think about why I stopped the graph at those points. Oops, Mr. Out, that's, well, no, it can't. It's just why did I choose only to stop it here? Like, why didn't I go past? Because then when I go past up here, it won't be a function. Okay? So the domain of the graph, of the arc sine graph, is... is negative 1 to 1. And then the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And you're going to say to myself, self, is that important? Sort of, it's going to have a minor issue at the end where that's important. But overall, it's not that important. It's important to math 12. Like when we, when we were working on problems and I asked you to find um, the arc sine of 
and and I was always having this big discussion with you folks about why your calculator only gives you first and fourth quadrant answers. And it actually has to do with how the graph here is drawn. It's because this is the first quadrant and that's the fourth quadrant. If you talk about angles in standard position, first and fourth. Okay? That's why. That's actually where that's coming from. Or that's why that's important. Other than that, that's all you really need to know. Okay, so determine the derivative of the arc sine function, or inverse sine function. Remind me to change that. I'm going to call it arc sine next year. So we start with, instead of starting with y equals arc sine x, this is hard to do. I don't have a rule for this. So what I would say is instead of starting with this, start with the other version of the inverse sine y equals x. Okay? They mean the same thing. So you look at it and go, oh, determine the derivative. Well, so take the derivative of this. What's the derivative of sine y? Cos y times y prime. Good. What's the derivative of x? 1. Okay, solve for y prime. <coughs> now you're, oops, cos y. Now what I would like to do is to have a formula that only has x's in it. So, sorry, I'm interrupting. So I'm going to go back to the Pythagorean identity. Cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So we're starting anew. So what we need to do is just sort of go, okay, that's doing some math 12 stuff here. Solve for that, solve that equation for cos y. Cos squared y equals 1 minus sine squared y. Take out the sine squared y and put in. I highlighted it, kids. X squared. <coughs> yeah? You see that those sine y is x? So sine squared y is x squared. Solve that equation for cos y. The root of 1 minus x squared. Now you're thinking to yourself, Mr. Epp, you didn't put a plus or minus in front of it. Are you? You're still three steps back? Okay, so I'll let you get caught up to there. None of them. I'm just going to give you the rule. I'm just generating the rule. I'm showing you where the rule comes. I'm showing you where the rule comes from. There's only, well, there's, there's two. There's sine squared plus cos squared equals one, and there's secant squared. Was it one plus tan squared equals secant squared? Those are the two that I'm going to use today. I think that's the only two that I'm going to use. Mm. I use a cosine double angle identity in chapter 6, but you're not going to remember it when I get there anyways. You guys caught up? Oh, clear with what just happened? Okay. Why didn't Mr. Rep put plus or minus? Here's why. I would like you to draw the cosine graph and only draw it. I want you to draw the cosine graph 
from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Draw the cosine graph just over that small domain. Thanks. Mr. F, it's always positive over that domain. It continues on, but that's not what we care about. It's because the domain of the question we're working with is positive. Right? So that's why it's just positive. So take out the cos y in the derivative statement and put in. That's exciting. Y prime equals 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared. So that's your formula. You can copy it into the formula box. The derivative of arc sine of x is 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared. What? Arc sine is inverse sine. It, it takes fractions and gives you angles. Sine takes, you, takes angles and gives you ratios. Arc sine takes angles and gives you, sorry, arc sine takes fractions and gives you angles. <laughs> so if you, went, if you went arc sine of 5 sixths in degree mode, your calculator is going to say, going to, going to say something like arc sine of 5 sixths, oxy. It's going to be about 80 degrees. If I went sine of 80 degrees, your calculator will return a fraction like 5 sixths. So what sine does, arc sine undoes. They're just the opposites of each other. Like square root does, squaring undoes. Right? Like logging does, exponentizing undoes. What's the chain rule say? Derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Outside times the derivative of the inside. Oops. Is there an example at the bottom? Oops, went too far. Okay, so what's so what oh crap. Okay, go home this room. And that's all it is. Determine sine to the minus one of x. We could call this. Why are you you doing this? x squared? So what's u prime while we're here? Two x. So. The derivative of arc sine of x squared is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x of u squared times u prime. So you could write it as 2x over the root of 1 minus x to the 4th.
How's that? Okay, flip the page. What? Because it's not just x in the brackets, it's x squared. Yeah. That's why I actually don't remember the first formula, I only remember the second one. Because the derivative of x is 1, and then it. Okay, so. Oh, what is the inverse of tan? Well, tan is. What is the inverse of function? x equals tan y. Solve for y. Well, arc tan x equals arc tan of tan of y. Really bad math. They undo each other. Y equals arc. Well, they don't really cancel, but it's close enough to say that they cancel. They're opposite operations. They're not opposite. Like, yeah, it's like squaring and square rooting. They don't cancel each other, but they remove each other. You know what I mean? Like, like when you add 2 to both sides of the equation, you have x minus 2 equals 8, and you add 2 to both sides of the equation, you're creating a zero pair. They do cancel each other. But squaring and square rooting, you're not really canceling. You're removing the operation. But for when you're teaching it to grade eights, you certainly aren't going to say those kinds of things to them because they'll be like, ah, what are you talking about? And you'll have a fire in you and then it'll be scary. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to graph tan, and I want you to graph it between negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And then I want you to switch x and y. I want you to draw its inverse. So this proof's going to start, or this formula generation is going to start exactly the same as the previous page. So you start with. Please go with the oh. Can you come back to the office, please? You start with x equals tan y, and then I'm going to ask you to take the derivative of it. One equals secant squared y times y prime. Make it y prime equals 1 over secant squared. Yeah. And then in math 12 we learned that I think it's 1 plus 10 squared y equals secant squared y. Hey, Mr. App, take out take out the tan squared and put in x squared, and you're done. Because what's y prime? Because you're, or maybe I'll do this. You're done. get 1 plus x squared. <coughs> so you can fill in that one, 1 over 1 plus x squared, and then what's arctan of u, or the derivative of arctan of u, I guess. 
1 over times u prime. So I only remember the ones on the right. I don't remember the ones on the left. It's extra formulas. Lord knows we have enough. OK. So if a particle moves along a line so that its position any time t is s of t equals tan root arc tan root of t when the particle equals t. So s of t equals arc tan. So, so I would start right now and say u is the square root of t. Oops. So what's u prime? One half u to the negative one half. So you could write it as one over two root u or t. Sorry, I guess a t. So t t. So s prime of t. All you got to do is drop it in the formula now. over 1 plus u squared times u prime now what throw 16 in and you're finished So you get 1 over 1 plus 17 times 1 over 2 times 4. Seven, oh, I'm an idiot. I got ahead of myself. 1 over 1 plus 16 times 1 over 2 times 4. So 1 over 17 times 1 over 8. I don't know. What? 1, one over... 136 meters per second, feet per second, whatever the units are, who cares? Didn't say, so we're not going to worry about it. Units squared per, no, units per second squared. Okay, so find an equation for the tangent line to the graph y equals 10x at the point, negative 1 fourth. Okay. So what's the derivative of 10? Secant squared x at the point negative pi over 4 comma 1. So what we need to do is figure out our m value. m is equal to uh, secant squared negative pi over 4. Now I suspect that the provincial exam or the AP exam is still going to make you memorize your special triangles. So I'm going to treat this as you can't reach for your calculator right now. So here's pi over 4, and this is 1, and this is 1, and this is root 2. So cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. And then negative pi over 4 puts you in the fourth quadrant. Cosine is positive there. So secant of negative pi over 4 Ooh, you know, root 2 over 1. But if you reach for your graphing calculator and you didn't believe me, you could type in it 1 divided by cos, negative pi divided by 4, close bracket, squared, enter, and it should say 2. root 2 over 1 squared, or 2. So the equation of the tangent line, tell me the equation of the tangent line. y minus, or y plus 1, equals m 
x plus pi over 4 and you finish. Yeah. Now you can actually tell me the answer to the next question if you remember what we were talking about yesterday. But if you're not confident with it, let's pretend, let's pretend that we didn't do the first page on 3.8. You want to tell me what it is? Okay. So the derivative of arctan is one over one plus x squared. What are you going to put in for x? <coughs> negative one. One over one plus negative one squared. I kind of expect you to go, hey, Mr. Strap, there's a property here. If I know the original function, I know the inverse is f. But if you don't, let's. Let's pretend you're having a moment, right? You, then you say, okay, Mr. F, I can take the derivative of arctan, no problem. That's easy. Substitute one in for x, you get a half. And lo and behold, you get you get the property exactly what we were talking about yesterday. The x and the y's point switch places and the slope is just the reciprocal. Curtis. Well, that's why we restrict the domain of the arc sine function only between the, the points that I've given you up above. But everything that we've done, we're going to do algebraically. So if, if I ask you to then find the slope, it's going to have to gonna It will have to work. No, no. No, I had to think about that. No, I've never had that as a problem. <laughs> I think they're coming after you mean if they're doing that to you. You're just going the other rotation. You're going the other way. You're going down instead of going up. You're going down into quadrant four instead of up into quadrant one. Okay, so now you're thinking to yourself, self, do I have to memorize some more? Well, not real. Hmm. I'm going to, okay. What's the first we have there? Okay, at, at their sine, arc sine formula. Tell me what the arc sine formula is. Okay, I just wrote the cosine one down. I asked you what the sine one was, and I wrote the cosine one down. Okay, what was the tan one? What was the tan one, kids? One over one plus x squared. Okay, well watch this one now. So do you really think I remember cotan? No, I just remember what tan is, and you remember that remember that sneaky little property if it starts with a C, it's a negative version of the other one. It's it's really I when I learned that property this year, flipping through a friend's of mine's notes, I'm like, that's so cool. I've never looked at it that way. Okay, this one's weird. And I have to go look it up to make sure that I've got this right. I don't remember this one. That's how often I use it. Oh yeah, there's a U prime after that. Times U prime. Yeah, oh hey, got it right. Give Mr. Up a gold star. Okay, what's the derivative of arc cosecant? Because you know what? There are times in my life that I've had to use arc cosecant. About that many times. Negative one over 
absolute value. So if it starts with a C, just throw a negative sign in front of it. <coughs> Copy the associated formula. So do you have to remember six? No, you only really have to know two. Uh, you can even tell me which two I think are important. Yeah, those are the two. Those are the two. Okay, one more. This is dumb. I don't want to do this one. Why would I even do this? Because it has nothing to do with what we're doing. So y equals, I don't know. Let's make something up. Well, this will be fun. There. That's evil. Cha-cha-ching. So U is arc sine, U prime is the derivative of arc sine. There you go. How's that? <coughs> what? Well, times one, if you want. Because the derivative of x is one. There you go. That's it. That's all. There is no more. <laughs>